Today, I want to just focus on the fact that we are blessed in Christ. What has happened to us in Christ, in Him? What has happened? The Bible says we have past tense. We have obtained an inheritance. God has qualified you to enjoy the inheritance, meaning there's nothing more you, need, you and I need to do to earn that, to try to get it. I mean, in, in the sense that God has already granted it to you and there's nothing required, nothing more required from you and me to qualify for that inheritance. So I just want to enumerate a few things uh, that uh, this morning, there are several others that are listed in the sermon notes, which are on the website. You can download it. And together in this book, uh, uh, the, Our Identity in Christ, you'll find all of this uh, listed. Uh, let's go now. Uh, the first one I want to bring our attention to is the fact that God said we will reign in life. The Bible says here in verse 17, and those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what will happen to them? They will reign in life. Adam made us slaves, put us in subjection. Jesus by causing God's abundant grace and the gift of righteousness to come on us, says, because of that, you are going to reign when? When you get to heaven? No. Reign where? In life. In this life. Let's go to the next one. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Paul is saying, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What has he done? He has, past tense, He has blessed us, us, all of us, with 10 blessings. No, with every, every spiritual blessing. That means every blessing that comes from God, because God is spirit. Every blessing that comes from God is, this, is included. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Next one, always triumphant in Christ. In Christ, God will always cause you to triumph. Why? So that through you, the beautiful aroma of Christ can be made known in every place. Amen? See, God doesn't cause us to triumph only in church. He said every place. We are complete in Him with His fullness. God the Father, He says, in Christ is all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This word fullness that the Apostle Paul write, uses in his writings, and you, read it, you see it a lot in Ephesians, and then again now in Colossians, it's, it's talking about all who God is, the very nature of God, that word fullness. You can study it. So in verse 19 of Colossians 1, he says, In him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So every person of the Trinity represents the Godhead completely. You are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So he's saying, in him, there's a fullness of the Godhead. You and I are in him, in Christ. That's what we've been studying. And by virtue of you and I being in Him, in Christ, we become complete. With what? With what's in Him? What's in Him? The fullness of the Godhead. Yes to all His promises. I just want to bear this on our hearts today. All the promises of God in Him are yes. Not yes and no. Not yes, maybe, and no. Not yes, maybe, no, and I don't know. No, it's only yes. And we all have the promise of the resurrection. But I just want to put this in to make it complete, that we believe in the resurrection from the dead. And that's a blessing for every one of us who die in Christ, that one day these bodies, these mo this mortal body will put on immortality. Amen? 
acknowledge the good things that you have in Christ. There is something in you that can cause you to triumph. There is something in you that can cause you to overcome. There is something in you that God has entrusted you. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. I need to awaken you to the spiritual truth. And that's how our fellowship is going to be made effective. Acknowledge the good things that are in you, in Christ. Amen.